Kingdom blessings and greetings. I'm King David, the vessel of Yielding Music Group, inviting you to stay tuned for season six of Let's Talk to the Lord, a gospel radio talk show created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Keep it locked right there. Trying to do what's right, but it
Holy and blessed greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. I am your gospel radio apostle, Apostle John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries. Thank you for tuning in for Season 6 of Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. Kingdom, our guest for this episode in Season 6 of Let's Talk to the Lord is radio show hostess, author, and teacher, Christina Lockett. Christina Lockett, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Amen. Thank you so much for welcoming me. Thank you so much for having me, Apostle. Amen. And before we begin our discussion, please share with the kingdom your repentance experience when you repented and embraced your journey with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, you know, man of God, I am what they call a church girl. I was real in the church and. I never left the church. You know, everyone has a different experience, a different testimony. But when I gave my life over to the Lord at an early age, I never left. And that doesn't mean that I didn't make mistakes or sin or fall short of the glory of God. But I was always there, um, specifically since around the age of eight years old. Um, My parents had different faiths. My dad was a Catholic a member, he went to the Catholic Church, and my mom went to like a non-denominational church. And so back in those days, they believed that whatever your father was, that's what you were until you made the decision or got old enough, you know, to change faith or just decide what it is you wanted to do in the body of Christ. And so my father worked out of town a lot. And because he worked out of town so much, I couldn't go to the Catholic Church with him like before, and I started attending church with my mom, and I just remember just at that early age asking my dad, was it okay that I become a member of my mom's church, which is Christway Church. It's a non-denominational church here in Houston, Texas. And my dad said, okay. And I remember asking him, could I get baptized? And in that time, though, I thought I had to get baptized because I needed to change from being a Catholic girl to, to a non-denominational girl, not yeah. realizing that, that that wasn't necessary. But, yeah, I'm definitely a little different in, in far as, like, you know, I didn't go out into the world and do some different things and need to come back to the Lord. When I gave my life to him, I stayed with him. And so I am grateful yes. that throughout the years he has definitely kept me. Amen. And so what's your status now in the kingdom of God and in the body of Christ? Amen. Well, I am a prophetess. Um, As a matter of fact, this month, September, marks 17 years that I have been walking in that office as prophetess. Um, And I thank God for it. But uh, along that journey, of course, Sunday school teacher, choir director, um, just whatever it was needed, you know, I, I, I did it all for the glory of God, and I thank him that he's expanded my ministry from radio, television, media, um, books, as you mentioned, I'm an author, and um, as a matter of fact, this month I'm releasing my fifth book. So I thank God for his position that he has put me in in the body of Christ. Amen, amen, and amen again. Sister Christina, Please announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I am so grateful that today's discussion is on restoration. Glory be to God. I'm excited to talk about restoration. And if it's all right, I'll go ahead and share. Yes. Amen, amen. Well, you know, when you first uh, said restoration, I began to think about restoration, and there are so many different ways that God will allow us to be restored. But one of my favorite scriptures as it relates to restoration is the Shunammite woman. You know, we're all familiar familiar with the Shunammite woman, and um, people mostly talk about when uh, she provided a meal and provided a place for the prophet Elijah when he came to town and when he released the word that God would bless her with a son. And we all know the story that she did give birth. And um, it was an incident that happened with her son where where he died, but God restored life um, back to her son. But 
that's not the only time that we see God blessing and using the Shunammite woman, but there is a story in 2 Kings chapter 8, and I love for you to read it on your own time, 2 Kings chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. But in this time, Elijah spoke a word of prophecy to the woman and told her that there was a famine coming upon the land and that the famine would be there for seven years. And he advised her and her son to leave, leave her land, leave her property, leave all of her wealth and the things that she has in that area so she could be able to live and survive through the famine. And she did what the prophet told. She was obedient. But when she came back, she found that someone else was on her land. Someone else was living off of her land. And so she had to go before the king. And what I love about it is right when she was going before the king, the king was asking Gehazi about the the great works that the prophet Elijah had done. And in that very moment is when they was talking about her. And Gehazi was like, well, here is this woman. Here is the Shunammite woman. Here she is. Here is her son. So it's like God will put you in the mouth of the king. He will put your name in the mouth of the king. So God will give you the favor, amen, that you need when you need it, and he will cause restoration. I definitely want to read verse 6, though. It says, when the king questioned the woman, she told him, so the king appointed an official for her saying, restore all that was hers, together with all the revenue of the fields from the day that she left the land until now. That's the part that that really kind of just gets my fire going and just makes me feel like shouting. Because not only did he say give her her land back, because that that could have been just a simple solution. Okay, she's back now. Y'all need to move. You know, that could have just been the simple solution. Everybody just have to go on about their business. But he said give her back. The revenue of the fields from the day she left the land until now. That means she had to get back pay. Glory be to God. Seven years worth. Hallelujah. Seven years worth. Restoration. So we want to understand that when God restores you, he doesn't just restore that small portion. No, he gives you back more than you could even ask for. Because I can imagine you know, if I was in her situation, I wouldn't even be thinking about why I've been gone for seven years. I just would be thinking about somebody's in my, my house, my, my land. They just need to move because I'm back now so I can get my space back. You know, and, and I'm honestly, come on, y'all, let's think about it and let's be real. Most likely she wasn't thinking, well, let me get back on. I could have made or should have had. No, 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 just move. But God is so good and so faithful. He will He will restore. And when God restores you, he restores you back more than you can ever imagine or think yeah. of. Because think yeah. about it. If she would have stayed, she probably wouldn't have had anything because it was a true famine. But because she left, she was sustained, and she came back and was restored more than what she would have had if she would have stayed. And, you know, I just love God. I love God, and I want people to understand today, whoever's listening, whoever's tuned in, that it's not even just financial areas or, or gain or land that God will restore to you. God will restore your peace of mind. God will restore your health. God will restore unto you everything that the enemy tries to steal or take from you. And there's just one more verse that I want to share, even in this short period of time. Um, We all know that the Jewish people had went through so much, and they had came out of exile. So they had lost a lot. They was in bondage. But God sent a word. Isaiah 61 and 7 says, instead of your shame, there shall be a double portion. Instead of dishonor, they shall rejoice in their lot. Therefore, in the land, they shall possess a double portion. They shall have everlasting joy. And I just want to reiterate, amen, that God will give you more. He'll give you a double portion. God sees the the trouble. He sees the trials. He sees the tribulations. He sees everything that you are going through. But when it's all said and done, he will restore you. He is the God of restoration. And I just want everyone that's listening, everyone that's tuned in to know that in due season, if you faint not, God shall restore you. Amen. Amen and 
Amen again. Kingdom, our topic for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is restoration. Kingdom, restoration is a part of the process for healing and repentance. The process for restoration is the releasing of conviction from God, the Holy Spirit, releasing conviction, repentance, healing, restoration, and then grafting into the body of Christ. The biblical meaning of the word restoration means to receive back, as Sister Christina has said, more than has been lost to the point where you are greater than your original state or condition. What God is declaring, Sister Christina, is if we humble ourselves under the mighty hands of God, which simply is meaning that God is supporting us, He, God, through Jesus Christ, will improve you beyond measure. Hallelujah, which is a total transformation from the beginning with the inner man, the inner being, our inner character. And kingdom tikkun, T-I-K-K-U-N, is the Hebrew word for repair or restore. God, through the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, takes our broken pieces, our shattered lives, and God, if we allow him, begins to remake us, healing every wound and hurt. He returns beauty from ashes. This in itself is a process, because if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness and cleanse us from evil. It's a process to drill down confessing, then releasing it and casting it with every care upon the Lord. Then the real work begins of faith and trust, meaning after we give God every ugly detail, then allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us to restoration. It's work because it requires our commitment to the study of God's word, to fasting, to prayer, to worship, to counseling, and obedience throughout this process as we visit the ugly areas of our lives. Kingdom, understand we are not saying um, that um, in this process it's going to be easy because during this process we will have to give show some forgiveness to some folks who has hurt us. We're not saying that you wallow in your past or relive it to the point or never let it go. But God will help us learn from it because we cannot carry old baggage into a new vessel. Forgiveness is a requirement for you to be able to properly heal, letting the bitterness, the hatred, and the animosity to go. I am not saying that you are going to have to be best friends, but because Jesus is our new best friend. But depending yes. on your purpose, you may have to interact at some point depending on each case and situation. But if your purpose requires you to It's perfected, allowing God to completely deliver you because Satan will definitely use every measure to restore up that anger. So to be able to have complete wholeness and restoration, please allow God to do the work in you with your full cooperation so that there is no hindrances to you arriving to your next level. And this process can seem mentally draining and challenging, but the results will be priceless and invaluable to your life and your purpose that I guarantee you, you will never regret it. 
Restoration is in the spiritual. The prophet Jeremiah declares in the 30th chapter and the 17th verse, for I will restore to health to you, and I will heal your wounds, says the Lord, because they have to have called you an outcast, saying, this is Zion, whom no one seeks after and for whom no one cares. Kingdom Zion is specifically important because the name refers to both a hill in the city of Jerusalem and concerning our worship. God is concerned with what is in the city most, meaning the internal workings of that city. Ultimately, it means a holy place or kingdom of heaven, which makes us priceless to God. Kingdom, the entomology of restoration is to restore, to give back, to build up, to repair, to renew, to reestablish, to free from the effects of sin, to bring back to a former and better state, to renew, to revive, to stand, to make or be firm, to cure, to heal, to bring back to a vigorous state, to restore our belief system, to finish, to complete, to return to life, to give new energy and give new life, which is all found in relationship and total surrender to our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Sister Christina Lockett, please give the final words on our topic of discussion, restoration. Amen. You know, as you were sharing your thoughts and ministering the word that the Lord uh, gave you, I just began to hear there is restoration right now for joy. Yes, Lord. There is restoration right now. Yes, Lord. And there is restoration right now for faith. Yes, God's children have really been broken through the pandemic. So many have lost so many loved ones. I myself lost two within four days apart. You know, so I believe, hallelujah, as everyone is listening and tuned in, God will restore joy. God will restore faith. God will restore peace on today. So that is the word of the Lord. Be ye restored, my sister. Be ye restored, my brother. Amen, amen, and amen again. Christina Lockett, please introduce yourself to the kingdom. Amen, amen. I just want to say to everyone that, again, I am blessed to be prophetess. Christina Lockett, but, you know, beyond even that title and beyond that anointing, God uses me in many different ways, and um, one way is through our media ministry. I'm on the radio every Tuesday live from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time on Raise the Praise 100 here in the city of Houston, Texas, and the Christina Lockett Show airs, um, you know, on the website. You can listen online at RaiseThePraise100.com. And we also have an app, so you can download the app as well. Um, Our television show has not been in production due to the pandemic, but if you go to our YouTube channel, you can see previous um, episodes. Also, when we have special events and we're doing red carpet, like Nephew Tommy had a birthday bash and we were able to um, be on the red carpet, those events are on our YouTube channel. And so in order to follow us on all social media platforms, including our YouTube channel, I suggest that you go to our website at www.christinalockett.com. In addition, uh, one way that God allows us to minister is through our magazine, A Message of Hope. And our September issue is now available. It's available on our website. It is a digital inspirational magazine. And I just want to share in that September issue, um, I wrote an article called Release Your Fear. Amen. That title alone ought to be enough to let you know what it's about. So I encourage you to uh, go and take a look at our magazine, A Message of Hope. It is a quarterly magazine, so again, the September issue is just released. The next issue will be in December. And I've written five books. Quickly, I'll share. The first book is more of a a personal testimony. It's called Love Lost My Story, uh, 
a message of hope. And immediately following that book release, I released a journal, My Story Healing Journal. Um, I believe that writing is therapeutic. And because I am a school teacher, I'm an educator, I know that sometimes we don't know what to write. So I actually share some sentence stems to get you writing and to get um, – that going, get it, get it out of you. Because, you know, sometimes we, we allow things to be on the inside of us and, and it overtakes us. And writing is therapeutic and it's a way to let it out. And so I use scriptures and sentence stems to help you and to encourage you to write and to journal. So it's called My Story Healing Journal. It starts with me because healing does start with you. We look for healing in external things, but it's internal. It starts with you. So my first yeah. book was The Testimony followed by the journal, and then um, I release permission to pray a message of hope. I believe in prayer. My entire ministry, the foundation is prayer. I believe that anything that you pray for and you ask for in his name, according to his will, it shall be done. So in permission to pray, I share scriptures on prayer. I share personal prayer uh, testimonies and just guidance on prayer. And and the, the bottom line is when people read that prayer book, they know that there's Nothing that they can't ask God for. They can pray about anything and everything. And there's also a chapter dedicated to sharing prayers of thanks because we don't always want to go to God just asking for stuff. Sometimes we need to get in his presence and pray thank you. God, just thank you. And so um, immediately following uh, that book, after my sons graduated high school and began to um, become men, they are 20 and 22 years old, I wrote a book called Parenting, A Message of Hope. And, and man, of oh God, in that book, I don't really tell people how to be a parent, but I tell people that they have to be mindful of the fact that their children will one day grow up. And when they right. grow up, what type of men and women do you want them to be? So I'm intentional in how I raise them, and I share that with the reader, you know, and I even share, uh, there's a chapter about being your best self, parenting as your best self. If you have a lot of unforgiveness and bitterness in you from from the spouse or, you know, if it's a mom from the dad or a, a divorce, anything like that, you can't parent as your best self. And it affects your children later on because as a school teacher, I see the after effects. You know, so I share all those things in that book called Parenting. And, man, of God, the reviews uh, have been awesome. And I'm excited to share with your listening audience that my latest book, my fifth book, is a book I always wanted to write, and I finally was able to write it. The Lord finally released me to write it, and it's called Favor, A Message of Hope. Favor. You know, we talk about favor in the body of Christ, not really knowing and understanding what favor is. And so I believe that once the reader reads the book, they will have an understanding, a full understanding of favor, and that they will know that favor is theirs. If they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, they can have favor as well. That favor is not just for one person. Favor is for us all. Amen. And how may the kingdom support your ministry and purchase your books? Amen. Everything is available on my website at christinalockett.com. All of the books are available on Amazon, so we post links there. So you don't have to, you know, just go all different places. You can find us, you know, like I said, our social media, our magazine, books, YouTube channel, everything is available on our website, christinalockett.com. Amen. Kingdom, let's talk to the Lord can be heard on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, and YouTube. You can download episodes from speaker.com under Let's Talk to the Lord. Don't forget the apostrophe S. We are live every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Central Time at KingdomInfluencersBroadcast.com and SensationalSoundsRadio.net. We're there every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Time. Please write to us at Let's Talk to the Lord at Yahoo.com. Please follow us on Twitter at Ross Apostle. Please visit our website, Let's Talk to the Lord Radio dot international. Please download our app on your Play Store for your cell phones under Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. You can now ask Alexa to play Let's Talk to the Lord Radio 
International, and Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show. We are also now on Roku. Search My Tuner Radio, then search again for Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Station. Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International is your 24-hour station for talk radio, interviews, news, and Christian music. On Amazon, order our book, Spiritual Guidance Through Alzheimer's Disease, with author Kimberly V. Porter. My music is available on Amazon and all digital stores. Lord, give me another chance, featuring Sean Scales and Tamara Lloyd. And remember now, thy creator under Minister John E. Ross. So, Kingdom on, till next time. May God bless you. May God keep you every day living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You can begin again No matter what your way has been Begin again He's waiting for you to create the space Let Him step in You can begin again
old has passed away. Behold. The new has come. You can begin again.
Yes, I do. Yes, I do. 